I hope you have a very good day today. Today I am going to do a very interesting story with you and that is A Horse and Two Goats by R. K. Narayan. Now R. K. Narayan was an Indian writer who wrote in a simple and easy style and his stories explore with humour and compassion the everyday lives of ordinary people. A Horse and Two Goats In this story, R. K. Narayan describes what happens when an English-speaking um, speaking American meets an illiterate South Indian villager who knows only Tamil and has never stepped outside his village. The foreigner with his English is baffled by the bizarre behavior of Mooney, while Mooney is equally mystified by the American's strange words and antiques. So here goes a sensitive yet amusing story, rich in situational comedy. This story is set in a fictional small Tamil village named Kritam. Now Kritam was one of probably the tiniest village in South India and it could be seen as the tiniest dot on the map. But it had its name Kritam which in Tamil meant a crown or a coronet. Muni, who is the protagonist or the main character of the story, lives in this town of Kritam, or rather small village called Kritam. The village consisted of less than 30 houses, mostly made of bamboo, thatch and straw, and there was just one big house which was made of bricks and cement. Muni's house was the last house in the fourth street, beyond which stretched the fields. In his prosperous days, means when Muni was rich, he owned a flock of 40 sheep and goats and he used to take them on an excursion every morning to the highway which was a couple of miles away and there he would sit on the pedestal of a clay statue of a horse while his cattle grazed the foliage or the grass all around. He also used to gather some sticks, dry sticks and would bundle them and carry them home for fuel at sunset. His wife would lit the domestic fire at dawn and would boil water in a mud pot and give him uh, food made out of millet flour to which she would add salt and that would be his nourishment for the day. At times he, could, he was also given a raw onion with it for lunch. Now gradually, Muni's fortunes declined and from a flock of 40 sheep, now he was just left with two goats and those two were too skinny to be sold or to be eaten. There was a drumstick tree which grew in front of Muni's hut and from which occasionally Muni would pull down some drumsticks and get them cooked by his wife. So one day he got those drumsticks, six drumsticks and he gave them to his wife and asked her to cook some sauce with which he would like to eat those drumsticks. Now here children, the authors tried to add humour for 
he goes and tells Muni, Oh, I am tired of eating those leaves. I have a craving to chew the drumsticks out of sauce. Now, Muni's wife answers him back and says, You have only four teeth in your jaw, but your craving is for big things. Anyway, she told him to get some stuff for the sauce, or rather the ingredients, to go to the grocery shop. Muni went to the village shop and tried all efforts to get things on credit, but he failed. Actually, he had taken a lot of credit from the shopkeeper earlier in the past. And so he was in a huge debt. Although he tried to make an excuse that it was his 50th birthday and his daughter would be coming, would be sending money to him. But still, the shopkeeper refused to give him any money or rather any ingredients. And in fact, he told Muni not to sit there outside the shop and sneeze and cough so hard or else he would fly off into the gutter. So Muni came back home and he was further humiliated by his wife for having not brought anything home to cook the sauce. So his wife tells him just to get away, take the goats and get away from there and not to come back till it was evening. She said this because she thought probably she would be able to go to the big house and earn some money by working there in the meanwhile and be able to get some food for the night. Now Muni took his two goats and went towards the highway, unleashing the goats from the drumstick tree. tree. He started out driving them ahead and uttering weird cries from time to time. Muni then went and sat under the clay horse's statue where he usually used to sit to protect himself from the sun and would watch the trucks and the lorries pass by. This made him feel connected to the larger world. While he was sitting there, he suddenly noticed a new sort of vehicle coming at full speed. It looked both like a motor car and a bus. It was a yellow station wagon that was approaching. The wagon came and stopped in front of the statue. A red-faced American dressed in khaki got out of the wagon and asked in English about the nearest gas station. And as he came closer to the horse, the statue of the horse, he commented marvelous. He was totally attracted by the beauty of the horse. The red-faced man wore khaki clothes. So Muni thought that evidently he was a policeman or a soldier and he thought that he's come to shoot him. And he decides that if he'll chase him or shoot him, he would start running. Meanwhile, the foreigner again cried marvelous and nodding his head and he went around the statue with his eyes fixed on it. Muni was quite scared, terrified. He just sat still for a while. Then the other man just pressed his hands together and said, Namaste, how do you do? Now listening to this or question of the American, Muni 
spoke the only ex English expressions he had learnt, yes, no. After having exhausted his vocabulary in English, he then said in Tamil, my name is Muni and those two goats are mine. The foreigner looked in the direction indicated by Mooney's fingers, gazed a while, for a while at the two goats and then with a very confused expression took out his silver cigarette case and lit a cigarette. The red-faced man gave a cigarette to Mooney, who received it with a great surprise because having had no offer of a smoke from anyone for years, so he took it eagerly. He all had always been wanting to smoke. Mooney drew a deep puff and started coughing and he felt as if his head was going round and round. The American told him that he had come from New York. Then he took out a wallet from his pocket and presented his card. Now Mooney was again very terrified and thought that the, the American has come probably to arrest him and he's showing him the arrest warrant. So he went on talking about God and this shows his spiritualism. But gradually, Mooney found the American to be friendly by his gestures and then he carries on telling his story that once a murder had taken place in the next village on the borders of Kritham and Kapam a few weeks ago. The foreigner nodded his head as if he although he understood nothing. Then he asked him, I'm sure you know when the horse was made. Now Muni just reacted by smiling. And he said that, he told the foreigner that I know nothing about that murder, which took place in, on the borders of Kritam and Kupam. The American tried his best that Mooney would understand him, but Mooney could not and there was a lot of misunderstanding and miscommunication between the two. Mooney ends up telling the stranger how cheetahs or jackals sometimes carry their cattle off. He also tells him that he never went to school. Then he talked about the temple priest who can see in the camp of flame, the face of the thief and how this Kaliug, at the end of Kaliug, the world will be destroyed and then this clay horse will come to life and will save the people from the evil. Muni also expresses his grudge for the village chief who, has gath who had gathered a lot of money. The American also tells Mooney his story of being a businessman dealing in coffee and how one day he was forced to work for hours, four hours in his office when there was no electricity or elevators. This incident had made the American become eager to look at other civilizations so he had come to India so, to see how people lived there. He further told Muni that his wife was staying back in Srinagar. Thinking Muni to be the owner of the horse, American offers a 100 rupee note to buy it. Realizing that some financial element has entered the talk, Muni thinks that the man wants to buy his goods. In fact, he, has all, he had always dreamt of selling his goats at a good price and setting up a small shop with 
with the money some day the money that he would get by selling his goats so now it was clear to muni that this american is offering him the 100 rupee note in order to buy the two goats and the american was actually trying to buy the horse an american handed over the 100 rupee note and was happy that he had bought the horse statue the american also says that he would take the horse and keep him in his cabin if necessary and he would also remove all the books from the room from his library and place the horse this shows that the american was quite educated and he says that he'll push the seat of his station wagon his car back and take the horse in it only if he could help him now muni having taken the money from the american returns home to show the money to his wife in the meanwhile the foreigner urges the men passing by to help him to carry the horse to his station wagon and also asks them for some gas to fill in his car when muni comes back home and tells his wife that he has sold the goats she doesn't believe it she accuses muni of theft her belief of muni stealing the money gets even stronger when the two goats return home just afterwards while muni was telling all about the goats to his wife suddenly there was a bleating of the goats outside his hut and there they were so muni's wife gets very annoyed and says that let the police come and catch muni while she is going to go to her parents house so this is the end of the story now through the use of humor instead of seriousness Arkinarayan has addressed many important social issues here. The title of the story also draws attention: a horse and two goats. Now, actually, it was the horse's statue which served Muni more than his goats. Hadn't it been for the American that he wanted to buy the horse, Muni would never have got that money. So. the title is quite apt and the most amusing part of the story lies there in the confusion between the horse and the goats so that is why the title could be considered to be apt now in the story there the there are a number of themes which we we can note down and children you may note down first is the theme of cultural clash that is between the east and the west muni belonging to the east american to the west then there is the theme of poverty and wealth same way muni was a poor man and american was a rich person and you can quote examples from the book moreover there is a portrayal of rural life here and also there is a theme of knowledge and wisdom so one theme of cultural clash theme of poverty and wealth second theme of knowledge and wisdom fourth portrayal of rural life in india with hunger and poverty social classes and caste system prejudices and superstitions so my dear children this is all for today i hope you understood the story well please go through the 
chapter from your book. If you don't have, you can follow the screen and read well. Thank you.